Today's Wednesday, April 29th, and most importantly, it's Western Day. Hey Natalie, I have a tongue twister for you. What is it, Lyric? A cow crossed at a crowded cow crossing. Okay. A crowd? A car? A cow passed at a crowded car? What? <laughs> a cow crossed at a crowded cow crossing. A cow crossed at a cow crowded cow crossing. A cow crossed at a cow crowded cow crossing. Thanks, Natalie. <laughs> No, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tomorrow all the things were gone I worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away Happy Wednesday. Well, howdy, partner. Howdy. Miss Cho, you look great. Uh, what's the deal today? Is there something special? Well, today is Wednesday and it's Western Day. So giddy up and dress like a cowboy or a cowgirl. Thank goodness. I thought it was going to look a little strange today, but I, I think I think I fit right in. So yeah, boys and girls, dress up like a cowboy or a cowgirl today and enjoy your Wednesday. And you know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is career day. What do you want to be when you grow up? Dress, dress up like that job or show us something that you can do to help you uh, do that job one day. That's right. I, I wonder if our boys and girls are going to want to be um, stay-at-home teachers. 
That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting to see, or, or maybe, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> Girls, think about what you want to be when you grow up. That's career day and dress up like that tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Uh, what? One of my good friends is stopping by today. Who is that? Mrs. Mayfield. I love Mrs. Mayfield. Um, I love it when she pays a visit. Now she's going to remind us about our wig, even though we're not at school, that we should still be showing some good manners, right? That's right. And today she's going to tell us about how it's important to speak using a kind tone. That is very, very important because sometimes we get excited. So I can't wait to hear more about it. So take it away, Mrs. Mayfield. Good morning, boys and girls. Oh my goodness, I'm just tickled pink to see you all. It feels like it's just been an eternity. Oh, my goodness. Well, again, my seat is empty where Mrs. Choate was sitting. And I just, oh, it just, Mrs. Choate, I miss you so much. We have got to find a way to Zoom together. Oh. It just sure looks like an empty seat. We're just like two peas in a pod missing one pea. Oh dear, my pocketbook is falling open. Oh, it was just a little windy coming in here this morning and my hair was a bit tousled, so I was trying to get my comb, but I can't find it in there. Well, that's all right. I'll just smooth it out a little bit and we will move on. Well, boys and girls, I hope that you have been staying busy at home, and I hope that you've been enjoying Mrs. Colby's stories. She's going to be reading another one just here in, well, a couple minutes after we're done talking. Oh, well, what we're going to talk about today is just making sure that when we talk to our friends and our brothers and sisters and our parents, that we use a kind, kind voice. Now, you can say the same words, and depending on the type of voice you use, it can mean something totally different. Well, like in, for instance, I could say, look at your hair, but I could say it in two different tones of voice. I could say, oh, look at your hair. That would make a person feel good. And I could say the same words, look at your hair. That might make a person feel kind of bad about how they're looking. The same words, but depending on the tone of voice I use, it means a totally different thing. And let me think. Oh, another example might be, if you ask to go to the park, you might say, uh, I want to go to the park. And if you said in another tone of voice, I want to go to the park. In a whiny voice, your mama might say, we are not going anywhere with you talking to me that way. So remember, it isn't always what you say. It's the tone of voice that you use. And that is very important. I know when I try to talk to people, I use a very pleasant, nice voice to make everyone feel comfortable and good about themselves. I know Mrs. Choate does too. Well, I would ask her, but of course, She's not here. So, and, uh, well, I did speak to Gertrude about this a couple days ago. Sometimes she tends to be a little bit thorny when she talks. Oh, I, I just don't know what we're going to do about her. She is a wonderful, what wonderful sister. She has such a good heart, but, oh, it's hard for her to use her manner sometimes. I'm going to be working on her. So boys and girls, remember when you talk to people, it's not always what you say, but it's how you say it that matters. So have a good day. Enjoy listening to Mrs. Colby's story. And I'll try to get my pocketbook closed up and get things all right again. Mrs. Choate, I love you. All we kids, I love you too. I'll see you next time with Mrs. Mayfield's Manners. Bye, boys and girls. Wow, thanks, Mrs. Mayfield. You had some awesome, awesome, really good tips about manners. 
boys and girls, those are great things that you could use at home. She did. And I have to say to her, I miss you too, Mrs. Mayfield. All right, boys and girls. So up next, in honor of Western Day, Lyric Sister is going to show us how to tack up a horse. What does tack up mean, Mrs. Choate? I don't know. Well, so um, I'm reading the definition because I don't know either. Okay. So horse tack is any equipment used to ride a horse, such as a saddle, girth, or cinches, bridles, or martingales. Putting a saddle and a bridle on your horse is referred to as tacking up. So Lyric Sister is going to show us how to tack up a horse. All right. Well, that sounds very, very cool. All right, well, we're going to say goodbye from the news and send it over to Lyric Sister. Uh, Mrs. Choate, I'm going back fishing. And, uh, you know, you have a wonderful day today. And let's uh, do this again tomorrow morning. Sounds good. Have fun. Boys Bye. Have day. Bye. Now for my next guest is my sister, Madison. So let's saddle up with Madison and Annie. Hi, I'm Madison and this is my horse Annie and today I'm going to teach you how to tack up western style. The first step that you do is you come over here and you grab your saddle pad. And then with the saddle pad, you take it and you place it over your horse's back. And you just kind of want it somewhere between their neck and their butt. And what the saddle pad does is it helps relieve pressure from the saddle itself. And she's a baby, she's just about two years old, and she's only had a few rides. So we make sure we get her a saddle pad with gel impact on the bottom. This will just make sure the saddle doesn't rub her, and when you have a big rider, it just, it helps out and it helps keep the saddle in place, and it can also keep dirt from under the horse that you might have forgotten to brush off, off the saddle. Because you want to make sure you protect your saddle. Then you grab the saddle itself. And this saddle is heavy. It's about 45 pounds, which is another reason why you need such a good saddle blanket is to help keep the weight off. You just throw it over like that and you try and get it even with the saddle pad. So I put it on a little crooked, so I gotta even it out. And it might look funky when you first put it on, but you can fix it later. I need to throw these straps over, pull these ones, then I have a strap on this side that I'll need to pull over. And then after the saddle's on and all the straps are in the correct place, you have what you call your girth. And with the girth, it slides under her tummy like this and it keeps the saddle in place and keeps it from moving around. A girth is kind of like if you have a belt to hold your pants up. So I just pull it around like that and then pull it under her. And then we have this strap, which we use to string through the girth. Just like that. And now I have a lot of extra rope, so what I'm gonna do is take it through over here and keep pulling it through however many times I need to get it short enough. Because you don't want an extra strap hanging around when you're riding, it might hurt the horse. So just like that, and you wanna tighten it snug. Don't do it as tight as you can as first. You might wanna be able to wiggle it around a little bit. Then you pull it through just like you were doing another wrap, but instead of going under, you go over, here, you go over and then there's this little circle right here that you pull it through. And then just like you were doing another strap, you pull down. And then there you go, you're all fastened. Then you take this strap and some people just leave it hanging, but I like to pull it through what we have right here. And it holds the strap and gets it out of your way for the entire ride. And then you have what, you can either call this a bucking strap or a back cinch. It has a lot of different names, but what it does is it's kind of like the girth in a way, but you just flip it over, bring it under, and then this is actually exactly like a belt. And you pull it through and go like this, and then put it under. And this keeps the saddle, if you're going on a hill, you know, it might keep it from sliding back or sliding forward, but I keep mine relatively loose since she's so young and we don't have any mountains in Florida. 
So unless I were to go rope cows with her, that would really be the only reason I tighten it back up. But right here, you have a saddle that's put on and you're almost ready to ride, but you have to make sure you always go back with the girth because you didn't do it that tight in the beginning. Because sometimes they'll bloat, which just suck in air in their belly to try and make you not tighten it enough to try and trick you. So you go back and tighten it up and then string it through. And then there you go, you're ready to ride. Responsibilities. I'll show respect to others and their properties. I'll say close, but first things first and do what I'm assigned. My attitude will be when when with safety rules in mind. I'll listen so I'll understand and follow all directions. I'll be responsible for my behavior and corrections. With teamwork, I will sort more and others energize. I renew and sharpen up with power and my pride. Yeehaw!